You're welcome back. Let's talk about depression and how that has landed so many people in suicidal attempts. Um, you know, it's cost many people a lot, you know, their jobs, their joy, their happiness. I mean, literally everything. And whether you like it or not, some way, somehow, almost everybody to some extent feels some anxiety and some form of unhappiness and it could lead to depression. But we've been told over and over again that the first step is to admit that you are depressed and to open up and seek help. But how many people are actually seeking help? And this morning, on the back of yesterday's conversation, that there are a number of people who unfortunately are not enjoying their jobs. But it's not just your work, but anything in your life that makes you unhappy. If you don't handle it, you could also end up being depressed. How do we prevent that? And when you are depressed, how do you know you are and what do you do to seek help? And that's what we're talking about this morning. We have a psychiatrist in the studios with us and she's going to of course uh, teach us what to do and explain to us further what it means she's ajua jamara she's an md with uh, mwacp good morning how are you good morning I'm good to have you in the studios thank you so um a lot of people are depressed whether they know it or not there's some form of depression and I'm just thinking that for a lot of young people as well, it's probably based on maybe social media and what we're seeing people do and the fact that we can't achieve maybe half of what they're achieving or even do anything close to what they're doing. And it leaves us feeling very distraught and then eventually into depression. It won't just be social media, but I just cited that example as well. Break it down further for us when we say someone is depressed and how do we, first of all, identify it and what do we do? Okay, so depression is a mental illness mm. it's a mood disorder okay what that means is that um it's not just a one-time thing so it's not usually when someone says i'm depressed they are talking about the moment mm. so you can refer to the moment and say I'm, a, I'm depressed in this moment but then when we talk about clinical depression that lasts for a minimum of two weeks okay so first of all before we say that someone has clinical depression mm -hmm. then that mood has gone on most times in the day almost every day for a minimum of two weeks mm. Then you have core features of depression. Okay. That would include a loss of interest, general interest in previously pleasurable activities. Mm. So things they used to enjoy, things they used to love to do, they are suddenly not interested anymore. And then there's also, so that's referred to as anhedonia. Mm -hmm. And then there's also general fatigue, loss of energy. So there's no energy to do anything. And that's where um, people may notice, because then people around you are like, get up, pick yourself up, you mm -hmm. are being too slow, but then there's no energy to even do that. And then the person suffering that depression appreciates that they don't have the energy, although they may have the will yeah. to get up and do something with it themselves, but there's no energy to do it. Mm. And then the last core feature, so there are three of the core features. The last one is the depressed mood, which okay. should last most times in the day, almost every day for a minimum of two weeks. It's okay. important to mention that the fact that someone has depression doesn't mean they can't smile or laugh at any point. Mm. So, the f um, so if we said that someone has depression and you, s you saw that they were laughing at something, that doesn't mean they are not depressed. Because remember, we're talking about most times in the day, mm -hmm. almost every day. Mm. So at other points, maybe you can manage a smile, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean you're out of the depression. What would usually lead to depression? Because we know there are certain things that make us unhappy. But then when you say depression, that's the extreme end of unhappiness. What will lead to that and how do you get there eventually? Okay, so um, when we're looking at causes, we look at biological causes. So things that just have to do with your biology. And then we look at psychological causes mm. and then social causes. Okay. So with the biological causes, then there are people who are born with, um, so there are chemicals in our brain that mm -hmm. help with our mood, manage our mood, help um, stabilize our mood mm. so that if I'm sad at this moment, I can cry for a few minutes and then up myself again okay. and then I'm fine. But those people are not able to stabilize their mood because of an imbalance in those chemicals, naturally. Oh. So they were born with it. And with most of those people, you are going to have um, 
a family history of depression or a family history of another mood disorder. There are various types of mood disorders. So if you have a family member who, you know, was depressed at a point or had some disorder, you should also be careful yes, because, because you may be born with it. Exactly, exactly. Then and in that then, case, you can't control it. No, you can't. So you can only manage it if you know there's a family history. And then we'll talk about the management later. Okay, yeah. okay. I see. So biological and then there's what? There's a psychological, there's psychological and as social. Well. Okay, and break those social. down for us. So for the psychological courses, we are looking at personality traits. Mm. So some people just by their personality are almost always unhappy or seem to be unhappy. Mm. And then there are those who by their personality traits are, are always out there, always happy in themselves, so yeah. to speak. Is that yeah. not linked to the biological then? Because it's still those same chemicals that would make you... You know, display so those with the traits. chemicals, we are looking at the balance of those chemicals. So uh -huh. if it's too high or too low, okay, okay, and then the balance. Okay. But then your personality trait is dependent on your environment, mm. your exposure, and then sometimes to some extent, like you're saying, the biology as well. But oh, mostly the environment. And then social. And is then what? social. That's where your work comes in, your occupation comes in. So if your work in itself is stressful, uh -huh. then the chance that you can tip into depression is higher than someone whose work is not as stressful. Or you just do not enjoy your work. Or there's no work to do even. Mm. So you're unemployed for so long. Yeah. yeah um, with education, maybe you're not achieving what you want to achieve, your goals. Again, mm. in that aspect, the personality comes in and okay. coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So for some people, they may have set a target and they are go-getters, they are high achievers. And so the fact that they're not able to reach that target just can tip them into the depression. Another person, though they are go-getters or high achievers, know how to cope. Yeah. And so they know that, okay, I wasn't able to achieve it in a year like I wanted to, but there's always tomorrow. Mm. Not everyone has that. So that's where your personality and then your coping mechanisms come in. So it's a balance of these three things, mm. the biological, the psychological, and then the social. Do we have statistics to show how many people have more coping mechanisms than those who don't? And none that I know. There's none like that. No. Okay, so we can't tell if more people are born probably with the coping me mechanism no, as against I those who don't. Know. How do you know that you are getting depressed? Because in most cases, it's like you don't see it happening. Like you're saying, yeah. there are people who smile and everything. And then before you realize, that person committed suicide the next morning out of depression. As an individual, how do you even know that this is leading me into depression. depression. Yeah. So usually for individuals, what they would notice would be the low um, energy. Mm. So they, because there's a will to up and do something with your life, but then there's no energy. That's mm. what the person might notice. The people around them may notice the mood changes. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes the mood changes come with just irritability. So they okay. are easily angry. Yeah. And if, um, if it's a family person, maybe a mother, you, um, what she'll tell you is all of a sudden, I'm always scolding my children mm. and they've not done anything to warrant that kind, that level of scolding. So those are some of the things a person can pick up on their own. And then there's also crying spells. So okay. they just cry. Sometimes no they can tell you. So the thing is, there's no real reason but if you ask them, they have to find something to say. Mm. And so whatever reason they give you, you're like, doesn't make sense. Or this thing has been going on for so long. Why now? Yeah. They yeah. bring up past events. And then there's also, so we'll talk about the severity uh -huh. of depression. So there's mild, moderate, and severe. At the severe level, the crying spells is not just, it's also a, um, inappropriate guilt or delusional guilt. Mm -hmm. So someone who is depressed can tell you that I'm the reason COVID is still ongoing. Huh? If I had read the Bible enough, maybe COVID wouldn't have come. That's definitely delusional guilt. Yeah. Exactly. And that can be because of depression. Oh, I see. They blame themselves they blame for, themselves for everything. everything. And then if they are um, older women, it, and depression is more common in women, it's more common um, in women over 40 years. Why so? Especially when they are postmenopausal. Oh, okay. And that's when people will call them witches because they are confessing things. Mm. And that's usually because of that self-blame. Okay. So I'm the reason that accident occurred. I'm the reason my child died. And then you see it as confession. And so she's a witch. So if you get menopause, it's very likely that it's you likely, could go into depression. Yes, it's a risk factor. Okay. <laughs> I see. And there's a woman who goes into menopause very early. Yeah. In their 30s. Yeah. 
So yes, because of the hormonal imbalance. imbalance. Yes. Wow. Very little time, but let's talk about how to manage it. So we are depressed. We need to seek help some way, somehow or manage the situation, what do we do? Okay, so the management is again dependent on the severity. Mm. So if it's mild, then all you need is psychotherapy. So talk therapy, that's okay. what psychotherapy is. So you speak with someone. It can be a psychologist, or it can be people around you, mm -hmm. or it can be a pastor or a counselor, anybody that can help you. Because you see, at the time you're depressed, you don't see anything good in your life. Mm -hmm. So you need someone to help you see those things. That's what the talk ther therapy is about. I see. And then if it is moderate to severe, then you don't just need talk therapy, but you need medications as well. Mm. So there are antidepressants. Those ones help elevate the mood. So those antidepressants work in those brain centers I was talking about, mm -hmm where those chemicals are to help elevate the mood. I see. So you definitely have to see... You definitely need to find help because if it was just mild and you didn't do anything about it, chances are you may get out of the depression anyway without m many people finding out or you may tip into moderate to severe depression and there are people who are depressed and on the streets. Mm. Mm. Okay. But if I have to work through it, I mean, what do I do? Honestly, because you are depressed, but you have to go to work, you have a family, you have to take care of them, and maybe you, you, you don't want to go see, um, you know, yeah. Well, usually people say a shrink. That's what they call you guys, right? I don't want to go and see a shrink, but I still have to go on with life. Is there a way I can help myself get out of depression without seeing a shrink? It's, there's not much you can do on your own because it's not a deliberate thing. You didn't get into the depression deliberately in the first mm. place. Um, if it was mild and then you got to talk to someone to help you, then maybe, so what that person will be doing is remind you of the things you've achieved, remind you of why your life is worth living in the first yeah. place. And then on your own, maybe you can read. But the thing is, you see, if it's about reading or performing a leisure, there's mm -hmm. no energy in the first place. So how do you even up and do that? Yeah. So definitely you're going to need help. There's yeah. not much you can do on your own once you're depressed. I see. Interesting. Well, yeah, we're hoping that we can help as many people as possible. Maybe another time we'll have another extensive conversation.